welcome to this Price of Job tutorial. In this video, we'll explain how to use the steel beam calculator to BS5950 through an example. To get started, we'll go to the top navigation blue toolbar and select the Engineering tab. Then, browse through the module toolbar, where we can select from a variety of different engineering modules. And here we can select the steel beams category and choose steel beam to BS5950. The module appears in the left sidebar within this folder titled Structure by Default. We can click on the pencil icon to rename the module to something more project specific, such as extension. Next to the module itself, there are three dots that allow us to open the module options menu. Here we can rename the module, duplicate the module, move the module to a different folder, or delete the module. For now, let's rename this module to something more specific to the calculation we're about to perform, such as ground floor steel beam number one, and save. And now we can start the steel beam design. In this example, we have a trimmer joist supported in the middle of the steel beam. Also, we have timber floor joists from both sides supported off the same steel beam. So to start, we'll enter the steel beam effective length, or the effective span as we call it. This is the clear span of the steel beam, which for our example is 3,900 millimeters, plus 100 millimeters bearing on one side, divided by two, plus 100 millimeters bearing on the other side, divided by two. This will give us an effective length of 4,000 millimeters, or a 4,000 millimeter effective span. To input this, we can click on the field here and use the slider to adjust our measurement as necessary, or we can simply select the field here and input our measurement manually. In this case, 4,000 millimeters is the effective span. If you have cantilevers on the left or right, you can select these boxes to add cantilevers, However, in our example, we do not have any cantilevers, so we will not select these boxes. Here we can input our utilization limit, and we recommend using a utilization limit of 99%. You can learn more about utilization limits in the explanations video we have among our other tutorials. Next, we'll click this options button here to open the safety factors and deflection limit. For safety factors, the British standard for dead or permanent loads is 1.4. For variable, live or imposed loads, the factor is 1.6. Then we can look at the restraint. In our example, the loadings are applied to the top flange of the beam, and hence the loads are destabilizing, so we'll check this box. Then we'll specify how the flanges are restrained for both the A and B flanges. We have options of both flanges fully restrained against a rotation on plan, compression flange fully restrained against rotation on plan, both flanges partially restrained against rotation on plan, Compression flange partially restrained against rotation on plan. Both flanges free to rotate on plan. Bottom flange only supported with positive connection. And bottom flange only supported with no positive connection. For our example, we'll select the bottom flange only is supported with no positive connection. Next is the deflection limit. Here we will consider both dead and live loadings combined and propose a deflection limit of the beam length or the effective span divided by 360. If you have a bifolding door or any other brittle element, then the span divided by 500 deflection limit should be used. Span divided by 500 is the effective length divided by 500, which in this case, 4000 millimeters divided by 500 would give us a deflection limit of 8 millimeters. And we could set this value here. The calculator will automatically use the minimum of these two values. So be careful if you have any special requirement for a specific value of maximum deflection. We do not have one in our example, so we are satisfied with the span divided by 360. Let's change this predefined value back to 14 millimeters so as not to affect our results. And then we can close this options window. Next, we'll take a look at our loading inputs. In this example, we have a timber trimmer joist with a dead loading of one kilonewton and a live loading of 1.2 kilonewtons. This trimmer joist is applied in the middle of the steel beam section. We also have timber floor joists from both sides supported off the steel beam. On one side, the timber floor joists span 2000 millimeters, and on the other side, the timber floor joists span 2000 millimeters. Hence, half of the loading on one side and half of the loading on the other side is supported off the steel beam. This is 2000 millimeters divided by two on one side, plus 2000 millimeters divided by two on the other side which gives us a width of loading perpendicular to the steel beam of 2,000 millimeters. So we have a timber trimmer beam with a dead loading of 1 kilonewton and a live loading of 1.2 kilonewtons. 
Also, we have timbered floor joists from both sides supported off the steel beam. Let's see how to enter this into the Price of Job calculator. Under the Loading stage, we'll click Plus Add New Load, and input a title for our first load. In this case, we'll start with the Timber Trimmer Joist. And for Load Type, this is set to Uniformly Distributed Load by default, so we'll change this to a Point Load, as our Trimmer Joist is set to the middle of our steel beam. Then we can input our dead and live loadings, and if we refer to our example, we'll see that these were 1 kN and 1.2 kN respectively, so we can input those here. 1 kN dead load and 1.2 kN live load. And our point load will be applied in the middle of our steel beam, so half the total of the 4000 mm span will be 2000 mm. So we can input that here, either by using the slider or inputting the value manually. And now we'll click the plus add new load button again, and this time we'll input our timber floor joists. And because this is a more standard calculation, we can simply click the pencil icon here to open the load editor, and then click this drop down menu to open the Price of Job template library. And here we can select timber floors, and Price of Job automatically adds the standard loadings for our timber floors, including the boarding, insulation, joists, plasterboard, and skim, and imposed floor load for a residential use. If you need to edit any of these values, you can do so simply by clicking in the field and making the changes necessary. Let's change plasterboard and skim to 0.18 kN per square meter. If you need to add any extra rows, you can do so by clicking the plus add row button. For example, we might add a row here for plywood with a dead load of 0.12 kN per square meter. And then this is added to our calculator. And then we can use these grab handles to reorder our rows however we wish. Also, Price of Job makes it even easier by allowing you to access a library of templates by clicking the Template button. Then you can browse through the categories, including roof coverings, boarding, insulation, timber, finishes, masonry, concrete, and imposed loads, including furniture and snow loads. So let's take a look at the boarding category, and then select a material. In this case, we'll select some 18 mm plywood. And by clicking on this, it is automatically added to our calculator. And we can close this window and reorder our rows. And if we have any duplicate rows that we need to remove, we can remove the unnecessary row by clicking the bin icon here on the right. And our calculator automatically updates. Now, if we expect to use these same inputs again in the future, we may want to save this as a new template. And we can do that by clicking the template drop down arrow here and then scrolling down to the very bottom where we we'll see our own custom list. And here we can save this as a template. And now let's give our custom template a custom name for easy identification in the future. We'll call this Timber Floor Residential and click Save. And now when we return to the Templates drop-down menu, we can scroll to the bottom and see our custom list. And here's our Timber Floor Residential template that we just created, ready for us to recall instantly whenever we need it. And if you wish to tidy up your custom list of any templates that you no longer wish to keep, you can delete those easily by clicking the bin icon here on the right, and then confirm the deletion. And if we look at our drop down menu, we can scroll to the bottom to see our custom list to see that our deletion was completed successfully. Next, we can take a look at the width of load perpendicular to the beam, which we recall from our example is 2000 millimeters. So we can input that here, and then close the load editor window. And for the timber floor joists, the load type is a uniformly distributed load, so we don't need to change this. And we can see here are the dead and live loadings automatically calculated for us. Now, if we want the self weight of the steel beam to be included in the calculations, then we can click this checkbox. If not, we can deselect it. In our example, we keep it selected. If you click this checkbox for show load details, then the load details will be included in the structural calculations report. And we can see that table by scrolling down here in the description. And if we uncheck this box, then the loading details will not be included in the report. We'll leave this checked. Next, we'll take a look at the steel beam section. If we leave auto search activated, Pressure Job will automatically size our steel beam section for us. If we deselect it, we can input our sizes manually. So let's deselect that for now so we can do a manual input. First, we can input the quantity of steel beams required, either one, two, three, four, or five. So we'll leave this set at one. And then we can choose the section type either a universal beam, a universal column, a parallel flange channel, a square hollow section, or a rectangular hollow section. 
In this case, we'll choose a universal column type of section. Then from the drop-down, we can select the column size. Let's choose 203 by 203 by 52. And for steel grade, we have the options for S275 grade 43 or S355 grade 50. So we'll choose S355. Next, for the restraints, the compressive flange, which is the top flange of the beam, is unrestrained in our example. So we'll select unrestrained here. Now, based on the inputs that we entered, including the steel beam effective length, the loadings, the restraint conditions, the deflection limit, and the steel beam grade, we should ask ourselves, is this section that we selected here the most optimal section? Well, there are two concepts of optimization, either by weight or by height. Optimization by weight is when we want to minimize the weight of the steel beam. For instance, this helps a lot during steel beam installation, since it makes it easier to install a lighter steel beam. Also, minimizing the steel beam weight usually reduces the cost of the project. Optimization by height is when we want to minimize the height of the steel beam. Minimizing the height of the steel beam maximizes the headroom. In this example, we'll choose optimization by weight. Now, if we click the auto search function, the calculator will give us the lightest section that can safely resist the applied loadings. In this case, 152 by 152 by 23. Alternately, if we choose optimization by height, then the calculator will give us the shortest section that can safely resist the applied loadings. In this case, 152 by 152 by 23. Sometimes the lightest is also the shortest steel beam section, so these two may coincide. Now that we've completed our design inputs, let's take a look at the results. In the description pane here in the center section, we see a summary of the results. In the following sections, we see the steel beam loading diagram, the bending moment, the shear force diagram, and the deflection diagram, followed by the load details, including the load details table, which we have selected to show with this checkbox, and then details for the supports, the material thickness checks, and the rest of the structural calculations in great detail. Regarding the results summary, you can see that all checks have a status of pass. Also, we can see the utilization factors. Now that this steel beam is done, if you have to do the same calculations for another steel beam, instead of starting all over again from scratch, you can save a lot of time by simply clicking the three dots next to this module here to open the options menu and select Duplicate Module. Now you can rename this new module for the next beam. So we might call this one Ground Floor Steel Beam number 2 and save. And then all we'll have to do is modify the values for the new beam. When you are ready, you can click on the Reports tab here in the left sidebar. And here you'll see the Structural Calculations page. And if you click Export as PDF, you'll see that your logo will appear here at the top of the preview, and you can customize this as needed. At the bottom of our structural calculations report, there's a section for notes, which you can either input manually by typing in the field here, or select the pencil icon here to open the text editor. Here you can input new text or edit the existing text as necessary, or if you wish, you can click the import note button here at the bottom to import notes from Price of Jobs professionally written notes library. And these are separated into categories for services, finishes, legal fees, substructure, structural members, or general. So for example, we might select the structural members category and select this note here. Final price for steel beams will be adjusted after structural calculation. To add this to our notes, we just click on this and it's added to our text editor. And here we can make any adjustments. And we can also add new notes to this library by clicking the plus add note button. We could add a note here just called new note and save. And now this is ready to be added instantly to future reports. We'll just remove that. And if we wish to edit this, we can do so by clicking the pencil icon and either editing our note or deleting it. We can also add new categories to our notes templates by clicking the plus add category button here. So here we might create one called new category and save. And likewise, if we wish to delete this, we can click the three dots here to open the Categories Options menu and either rename the category or delete it. In this case, we'll just delete that. Here under Substructure, we see another good example that shows that this is particularly handy for adding lengthy legal disclaimers. When we're done, we can close the text editor and we can see that our notes have been added to the bottom of our Structural Calculations report. 
We can also combine this page with a cover letter or cover page. So we'll click the Combine button here on the left-hand sidebar. And here we have options to combine with a cover page or cover letter. To customize our cover page, we can click the pencil icon here. And here we can adjust our logo positioning and choose to either show the simple project information, the detailed project information, or the project quote information. In this case, we'll just keep it simple. And for our cover letter, we can access that here in the left sidebar. And here in the field, we can just type whatever we wish. We might say this price quote is an estimate only. And then if we wish to, we can save this as a template by clicking the three dots here next to the templates button and giving our template a name. We'll just call this quote and save. And now in the future, we can go to our templates dropdown and select that to quickly recall cover letters that we've already created. When you're done, you can print the complete report, export it as a PDF, or email it to your client or contractors directly from within Price a Job. And that's how to use the steel beam calculator to BS5950. Thank you for using Price a Job.